Hi, I'm Zach, and in today's video, I got a brand new grip controller case for the Nintendo Switch. It's not the Nitro Deck. I've already reviewed this controller, but while reviewing it and examining the back and seeing the ports that they had, I was really curious, is there a controller that actually has maybe dock capabilities built into it? Well, that's when I came across the Eggshell Controller 2 from Dobe. This controller has dock capabilities built in. We're gonna be able to hook up an HDMI cable from this controller to our television. Now I'm quite curious how that's going to work and how the feel of the actual controller is going to be. So let's get into the review, open up this box and take a look at this brand new Switch controller case for the Nintendo Switch. All right, let's take a look at the Eggshell 2 controller from Dobe. Go ahead and open up this case. We've got our controller and some directions. So the instructions are important because you're gonna have some programmable buttons on this controller and you're gonna to need to know how to set that up. All right, let's lay those to the side. We'll take a look at the boxing. I think that was all that was in there. It's very flimsy uh, packaging, but it gets the job done. You can see that they had a lot of colors. Now I went with black here because I'm still looking for a nice black controller for my Nintendo Switch. So we'll lay that off to the side. All right, here on the controller, we have some foam protection here on the joysticks. And wow, those are, um, those are some tiny joysticks. Like the tops of these joysticks have got to be smaller than the Joy-Con ones. So if we compare here. All right, so let's take a look here. Let's get our, get our Joy-Con measurement here. And yeah, there we go. About a 0.6 there. Yeah, and that fits right through. So we're really to a 0.54. If you want to check out millimeters, we'll check out millimeters here. Let's take those measurements again. So just about 15 millimeters on the Joy-Cons and we're under 14 for these new ones. So yeah, quite a bit smaller. So let's move that off to the side. So yeah, that is, that is tiny. Uh, and of course the D-pad here, we've got this design. It's more like a PSP design. Now the corners are pretty rounded. Doesn't look like we've got sharp edges. Definitely not in the center there. Outer edge, you know, feels a little raised for my liking. Um, but my thumb does rotate in there pretty well. And of course we have our USB-C port here. Now, one of the major things I had against the Nitro Deck was this backing here. And so let's take a look and see how that feels. And, you know, while there is a material back here, this is not, not the smoothest or softest material. Ooh, and the logo here? Wow, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pick that up, but that almost feels more like sandpaper than anything soft. It does dip ever so slightly off of the gray material. So the darker is set down further. Let's take a look here real close. So yeah, this gray material, not the softest, but this black material, that is really rough. I'm gonna rub it with my thumb and you can see it's leaving some black residue on my thumb. So that kind of gives me a little bit of a pause, but you know, it's softer than hard plastic, but the fact that it's coming off on my thumb, I don't think that that's gonna damage the back of the switch, but something I'll keep an eye on. And here on the edges, we've got plastic clips, no metal on the sides. So we shouldn't have issue like I had on the retro flag with that scratching the controller. And we've got four buttons across the bottom here. So we've got like a settings button here. This is gonna be used for programming the controller. Uh, we have our screenshot button. We have a home button. We have a turbo button and we have our start and select buttons at the top. So shoulder buttons feel pretty good. Not a lot of travel, feel pretty responsive. You know, this feels pretty good in the hand. Uh, this edging here kind of reminds me of the Hori split pad a bit. So I wonder if that's gonna cause any kind of issue over time. I always felt like the Hori split pad because it tapered so much, it wasn't rounder here on the edge. I always felt like that dug into my palm and extended gameplay. So on the back, we have two programmable buttons, a kickstand. We have our vents here for heat dissipation and this big black button. Now this big black button, 
is going to turn on the dock mode for this controller. So as you can see, we have an HDMI out and a USB-C power in and a USB-A port. So what that's going to do is allow us to use this controller, press this button and switch it into dock mode. But before we get to all that, let's see how the Nintendo Switches fit into this. So first up, we have the original Nintendo Switch. Okay, goes in there. Little bit of a gap here and there. Feels pretty, pretty sturdy. A little bit of a lip up here at the top. So the controller doesn't go all the way to the top, which is great because it doesn't cover our card slot here. We should be able to open that up very easily. And also on the back here, we can take that card and we can store it in the back. And so we get two slots back here for storing Nintendo Switch games. Put it in there. It's pretty snug, you know. I don't feel like it's coming out of there too easily. If I could flick on that and not have it come out. All right. So that's great. We can actually get to our port, put in our game cards while it's still in the case. Let's see what kind of angle we get from that. Yeah, and it sits there well. It's actually got a much better angle than the Nitro Deck. So the Nitro Deck, if you can see off to the side here, it slanted back way more, but I find that angle is pretty good. And again, mainly that kickstand's there so that we can then hook in and use it as a dock. Now let's try the OLED switch. Let's see how this comes out. Yep, just pushing up there. Slides that right out. So since we saw some gap there, I'm sure that the Switch OLED is going to fit nicely. Yeah, it goes in a little tighter. Ooh, that had a nice click to it. Kind of sounded like the uh, Nitro Dex locking mechanism, but there is no lock on this. So let's see just quickly. Yeah, you just kind of a little forced to push it out of there, but that's definitely in tighter with the OLED. Now we do have a little LED down here, indication light. Uh, that's a lot dimmer than it is on the uh, cracked Nitro Deck, which I like. I think the Nitro Deck is way too bright. I know that we can turn it off on the Nitro Deck, but you constantly had to turn off that Nitro Deck light as every time you turned it on and off or replugged in, it reset that setting. But yeah, this has a pretty good feel to it. Let's go down and take a look at the sticks. Always one of the first tests I want to do when I get a new controller or grip case. Let's come in and let's see how these sticks react. All right, well, I'm not seeing any dead zones. You know, given how small this thumbstick is, it does feel weird. Um, I would have liked a bigger pad on here. I'm not sure if we can get another top. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's not grabbing to any of the accesses. It's going around right through the X and Y just fine. Yeah, that, that that's pretty responsive. I'd still say the retro flag maybe feels a little better than this. But that's great. Let's just try the other one. Make sure. So, yeah, that feels... Those feel great. Now, let's take a look at buttons. A, B... All map properly. Yeah, if I wiggle the D-pad, you are going to get some inputs, but I really got to wiggle that pretty hard. So, because of its design, I think you're going to get pretty good directional inputs. Um, getting to the diagonals, I don't think it's going to be an issue. It's just kind of a feel of having this type of D-pad design. Not really my favorite design. In terms of D-pad, I like a more traditional D-pad, but that could definitely work. Let's try programming our back button. So I think we're going to hold our settings button till it blinks. All right. And then I'm going to hit the B button. I'm going to press my back button. And that should have set it. So yeah, that's no longer blinking. And pressing the back button gives me the B button. You could also program macro. So let's do x x y x a b right and we'll hit the back button to set it it stopped flashing that's great let's quit out of here let's go back in now i'm just going to hit the back button here 
Wow. So yeah, there you go. It's got macro settings and you can see it's a lot more meticulous in how it's entering those buttons. The Nitro Deck did it so fast that it's questionable whether the software could even keep up with those type of button presses when you're playing your game. You know, that, that would really be dependent on the game and whether it could, it could read that. But this... So I don't think there would be any issue in any game picking up those button presses. You could also do turbo, and I believe it works in two ways. If we hold A and hit turbo, we get continuous. And you can see, <laughs> once it's clicked, it's just going to keep going. Right? So we no longer even have to hold the button, but it'll just continually select that button. You can clear that again, and then holding turbo and pressing the button is just when you press the button are you going to get turbo. Well, we'll check out some Mario here for the D-pad. Pretty easy to use the D-pad. I would say that the face buttons, it's a little harder to roll between those just for the feel of it. Not too bad there. Go into my borderlands. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good, uh, pretty good movement in here. I always felt like the nitro deck, I was not getting enough range. Well, there we can hear vibration a little loud. I know we can change the vibration levels, but I think it's on the lowest setting right now. And I have to say, I like taking my back buttons when I'm playing first person shooters, you know, and assigning. So let's assign that to the B button. B, and then my back. That way I can jump and aim. That's about the only time I really like using those back buttons. That, you know, if I don't want to click it on these thumbsticks, I find buttons better than the thumbsticks. Yeah, that works pretty well. Let's also take a look at gyro. So turn on motion control. Looks like I want to turn up the sensitivity to get a little bit more motion out of the motion control. Yeah. All right. That works well. Yes, yeah, so you might have to play with some of the sensitivity settings for the motion control, but yeah, it works. All right. Now let's get into the main feature on this controller, which is going to be the HDMI out. All right. So to get started here, we're going to have our Nintendo Switch, a portable monitor, a controller, which uh, there will be a review shortly on this. A uh, little device, very cool. And then an official Nintendo power supply. This is what makes me a little bit more comfortable using third-party docks when I have an official Nintendo power supply. So let's go ahead and hook up the power supply. We're gonna plug that in to the dock here. And we can see that we're getting a charge, which is good. We're gonna grab the HDMI port. We're gonna plug that in. And we can see back here on the back that there's a blue light on the back of this controller, meaning that it's in dock mode. So we can press that to take it out. So what we need to do is also get power to our monitor. So we're going to use this USB port here. And we're going to plug that into the USB-A port. So that we have our monitor is powered on. Let's go ahead and hit the back button here. I'm going to turn blue. And we can see that now we have the switch in dock mode. So pretty, pretty cool there. Again, there will be a review on this particular modification adapter that you can get for your Xbox controller to work with the switch. And as you can see, it also has motion controls. So one of the other cool things about this setup is that even though it's outputting in dock mode to the monitor, it could still be used as a controller. So, yeah, motion still works. While this may look like a nest of wires coming out the top, it kind of is. We have three cables here. But if we're using any other monitoring source that's already powered, you're not going to need the USB-A cable here to power your device. It will already be receiving power. So you're really only looking at the HDMI and USB-C to power the controller. So very cool. We're actually getting dock capabilities out of a controller. So now I want to take a look at some of the positives and negatives. The positives are that it has a built-in dock. The joysticks are responsive with no real dead zones. 
It has programmable back buttons. The turbo functions are usable. The offsets of the buttons to the sticks makes the controller more comfortable to hold and operate. The shoulder buttons have a good response and throw to them. It has two game cart slots. And one of the biggest positives is the price. And the price of the Eggshell 2 is gonna be 37 to $40. That's with shipping through AliExpress. Some of the negatives are the small joystick tops and the joysticks are non-hall effect. The D-pad design, the padding on the back of the controller being rough, the noisy rumble motor, especially at higher settings, and that great secure lock sound that we get on the OLED model when sliding it into the controller just isn't there on the original Nintendo Switch. So for me, the HL2 controller is going to be my go-to travel controller. Now I have a lot of grip case controllers for the Nintendo Switch, and the Retro Flag one is still going to be my daily driver. I find it still to be more comfortable and better responsiveness on all the buttons and joysticks. But the Eggshell 2 controller does have that built-in dock feature, and I like that I'm not going to have to worry about packing a dock when I go on vacation. Would I recommend the Eggshell 2 controller? You know, everything works well for me. I enjoy it. It's going to be my travel controller. But for other people, it really depends how comfortable you are having a third-party dock included with your controller or just the physical buttons and sticks that are on this. So the HL2 controller is not going back in the box for me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.